Do you have a December city manager report for you? We'll just jump right in with some important dates. Uh, wanted to remind everyone in the public and, and uh, yourselves as well that we have two meetings this month on the gathering space. Uh, the two public meetings are going to be held on December 5th at 6 p.m. in the auditorium, uh, room 301, and also on December the 18th at 6 p.m. in auditorium room 301. So we encourage everybody from the community to attend those. Uh, and we did have to move that second meeting to, to avoid conflict uh, in downtown with the holiday train. So we're trying to get that word out. Uh, we do have the airport master plan meeting it's scheduled from 1.30 to 3.30 in the baggage claim area on the 7th and 6th. The Source River Joint Board is going to meet on the 7th uh, in Bismarck. Uh, State Water Commission on December 8th in Bismarck as well. And then uh, just a reminder, of course, with the holidays, the city offices will be closed on December 25th and 26th, as well as New Year's Eve, January 1st. I just want to back up just a real quick second. Also, let everyone know because of the uh, holiday season, uh, the committee of the whole meeting is going to be on January the 2nd and January the 3rd with city council, not the first Monday, of course, but the second Monday in January. So that's a little bit different than most of our other meetings. Okay, really quickly, just wanted to update you. Uh, most of you are aware of uh, the uh, bidding that we've done for the first three phases of the flood control projects. The phase one bid, which is the fourth avenue bid, uh, came in $3 million less than the first time we bid it. This is again, uh, well we had to bid the project twice, and fortunately the second bid came in another 3,000, or excuse me, $3 million less than the first bid, bringing the total difference to about $15 million for phase one under the engineer's estimate, which is exciting news for us. Phase two and three, which is the Napa Valley Forest Road, uh, portions of the project the current low bid was about $35.7 million, and the, uh, the engineer's estimate was about $6 million more than that. So Wagner Construction submitted the low bid on phase two and three. Park Construction submitted the low bid on phase one. Essentially, all bids are going to be awarded after our permit approvals come from the State Water Commission and the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, but fortunately so far with these three bids, we've been able to achieve about a $21 million savings over engineer's estimate. Of course, that money is going to be put to continuing these projects uh, uh, as we move forward and protecting as much of the city as we can with the resources that we have available. Uh, moving forward, the Army Corps of Engineer Feasibility Study for Phase 4, this is the Maple Diversion, uh, has been posted for public review. The window ended in November 30th. And the first public input meeting was held on the 16th uh, at the uh, auditorium. So uh, Burlington Northern's portion of the flood protection is in, is in design right now. It's almost complete at 90%, so we're excited about that too. We do hope to get the, the results of the feasibility study and all the public comments uh, back here shortly from the United States uh, Army Corps of Engineers so we can continue on with that important piece of uh, the project. Next, we'll talk about the uh, National Disaster Resilience uh, Competition uh, funds that we've been uh, enjoying. Give you a couple updates here. Uh, first of all, the downtown gathering place. I've already mentioned to you the two meetings. Uh, last uh, week, the Committee of the Whole, you all looked at the scoring criteria. That's up for your consideration uh, to formally adopt this evening as well. So that's exciting. Uh, property acquisitions. Uh, we've had a couple breakthroughs, uh, two of which you'll look at this evening. This is a settlement with the home sweet home uh, property as well as the So uh, both of those are in front of you tonight for, for we did close on 11. With regard to affordable housing, two proposals were received for the single family resilient neighborhood RFP and they're currently being reviewed uh, and processed. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about policies and procedures with improvements in regard to gap financing. Uh, these policies will be presented to the city council next month. Uh, one proposal was received for the multifamily uh, request for proposals, uh, but unfortunately it was withdrawn. So we're going to be looking at that RFP and uh, revising it and then letting it out again to the public for, uh, for additional uh, requests. I did want to let you know that we did send out the waiver for the uh, NDR project for City Hall relocation. This is important to us because, as you may know, that although we've got uh, several million dollars set aside for uh, the relocation of City Hall, 
Uh, we were told that we could not begin that project until we made substantial progress on other components of the, uh, the NDR program. And so we feel that we are at that point. We've been consulting with uh, HUD on this, and we've put together, I think, is a very strong case for allowing us to access those funds which have been set aside for the City Hall relocation. So that's been submitted, and we are just, uh, you know, I don't know how long it'll take for us to get through this process. It could be just a couple months. It could be a greater part of six months. But we're going to continue to try to move this forward so that we can get this other aspect of, uh, of the important work uh, carried on. Moving forward, and I won't go into this with too much detail because the mayor did touch on it, but, uh, and many of you were at the event, but we did host uh, an economic development forum. Uh, and uh, this, we brought in members from the Economic Development Council that, uh, that uh, had come in and provided a two-day training and workshop, um, which is the start of several activities which are going to be occurring as part of a partnership between the city and the Minot Area Development Corporation. So I want to thank uh, Stephanie uh, Hoffert for her uh, leadership on this and uh, helping to host and put this together for us. Uh, it, was, it was a really well-attended event. Typically, you, you don't get a whole lot of folks that attend these things. Maybe you're 20, 30 from a, from a community our size. We had about 50 participants, which is really great. And there was great dialogue, too, by the way, in and around uh, what we could be doing and, and um, what's worked well and, and what maybe we want to consider going forward in and around the world of uh, economic development. So that was really, really beneficial for us. Just quickly want to update you on the parking garage, as you all know. Essentially, the tower crane has been removed. I, I think I reported on that last time. Uh, with that, we are allowed to move forward now in closing out the, the, the city's portion of the construction of the two ramps. <coughs> so that's going to take us about a month or two as we work through punch list items and reconcile invoices and, and uh, various work that needs to be done. So we are hopeful that in the next month to maybe six weeks, we're able to close out fully our portion of that project and, and essentially be done with it. Uh, there is a big meeting, about a four-hour meeting, that's going to occur on December 11th with myself, some of the key staff members, and then the Cypress representatives to talk about how we can advance uh, this, the next stage of these projects moving forward. Uh, so we are looking at, um, uh, it's more of a planning meeting with uh, the two organizations to, to attempt to try to, to try to move this project along. I did want to offer a correction. Last time I gave my report to you, um, Last month, I mentioned to you that we expected for Cypress to pay in full all of the outstanding uh, amounts in rent and whatnot that was due. I mentioned to you that uh, there was a outstanding balance of $255,000 that was due in rent uh, on October 15th, that that, that that was not paid, and we immediately issued a notice of default and demand for cure. And I had mentioned at the meeting, uh, last council meeting, that they were going to come in and pay that in full. I misunderstood uh, what they meant to, s or what I meant to say, or misunderstood was that they were going to come in and pay the interest on the last payment that was late in full, which they did do. Uh, so that means that we are still now um, in default with the 255,000 that's owed for this rent due on October 15th, plus accruing interest daily. So I apologize for that misunderstanding and, and therefore miscommunication to you, but I wanted to get that corrected. Um, <clears throat> I won't go into too much detail here about the legislative outreach we've done, other than to say uh, that I do feel that the City of Minot has uh, made a very, very good case for continuing um, to uh, make its place for hub city funding. Uh, the Mayor touched on this briefly, so I won't go into too much detail, but I think all the messages and the themes that we intended for uh, the legislative committee to hear uh, got carried across loud and clear. And I'm pretty excited to, to say that uh, the feedback that I received personally uh, from many of the legislators on the committee, as well as our local area legislators not part of the committee, was extremely positive. So I'm, I'm grateful. And there are a lot of folks that we have to thank you for this. The mayor mentioned a number of uh, individuals that were pretty critical in the, the putting together of all of this. Now, this, this was an effort, of course, by not just city staff members, but members throughout our community and with different uh, organizations, businesses, and, and whatnot. Here's just a few on the screen here, and I, I won't go through the time to read them all off, but I am very, very grateful, um, particularly for the, for the petroleum businesses that helped us, uh, helped us tell the story to the, to the legislative committee that we are truly impacted by and are a major player when it comes to what's going on in, in oil and natural gas uh, production out west. In addition to those organizations, um, 
we had uh, several key local area legislators that, uh, that volunteered uh, four hours of their time to come in and speak with the staff in helping to set up this meeting. Uh, that occurred on November the 15th, and I'm very grateful to our local area legislators for, for attending and for providing very constructive feedback, which I think helps strengthen the reports uh, and the information that we were sharing. Finally, we had several presenters. The mayor mentioned most of these presenters. I did want to add uh, uh, Chief Jason Olson, our police chief, who was also instrumental as well as all the rest of the staff here. And then lastly, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of people to pull this off, and we had a lot of people internally uh, and externally to our organization that helped pull this off. And, and here are the names of many folks that, that you might not first think were contributors to this, but were absolutely instrumental in helping to pull this off. Uh, so I want to thank all of them as well. Moving forward, I did remind you, or I think I did introduce last month, that we are going to have a department head retreat on December the 13th uh, for several reasons. Uh, you know, obviously, some of the big reasons are to improve team building and to also imp improve our strategic and operational aspects of the organization, and really to tee up this idea of you know, what we're going to be able to kind of discuss and, and move forward. In the, in the way of um, strategic planning and, and economic development and other sorts of things, and to provide a source of information that would ultimately feed into a uh, council retreat, which you've, you've all been talking about. Um, just keep in mind, on December 13th, uh, staff, you know, department heads might be difficult to reach, um, but they'll, you know, they'll have uh, their seconds in command uh, watching over their departments, but I uh, just want to make sure everyone knew that that was going to be taking place. Lastly, I wanted to, I sort of feel like I need to begin updating you on all the council directives that you've provided over the last several months. This list continues to grow. I'm getting concerned that the list is getting large and the time is getting short and the resources are few and far between. So uh, we are going to have to prioritize these various tasks. Uh, I've tried to put together at least a, a best guess as it relates to the various tasks what our anticipated start date is, and what our completion dates, at least targeted, are meant to be. This will be uh, adjusted probably monthly, but I, I do feel like there's so much uh, that we need to kind of keep a list of this and keep you up to, up to date on all of these various aspects. So I won't go through all of this stuff. It's in your packet uh, if you, if you want to look at it. But uh, essentially, we, we do have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, and I know that this is important work to you. Um, but these are all new tasks that, uh, that are in addition to our standard jobs, and uh, so we'll try to work them in as, as well as we can along the way. With that, I'm done. Oh, sorry, I have community engagement uh, announcement again. This is just a reminder of the State of the City address that we're going to try to, uh, to pull off as a first for our community. Uh, it looks like maybe early February. I'm looking at February 1st or February 8th. We'd like to keep it on a Thursday. We are looking at venues right now, and uh, that, of course, that availability of various venues is going to dictate exactly when that date is. Uh, but uh, we'll have a lot more detail, I think, to share with you in the January meeting. So uh, this is really just a, a placeholder reminder at this point in time. With that, I'll close um, and uh, invite any questions you might have. <coughs> any questions for uh, Mr. Berry? Uh, Lumen Muski. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Tom. Uh, <coughs> topic has come up at, at past meetings here and there, and I think you gave a presentation on it maybe this spring, but uh, with phase one flood protection moving forward, have we, we made any additional plans with the Walter Street House, uh, or uh, do we have any direction there? Um, there's no direction at this point in time. Uh, there's some information that I've asked the staff to pull together on the history of the decision making that went through uh, the city council's or the past city council's decision to acquire the Walters House. That information is being pulled together, and at some point we owe you more information about that, kind of sharing what's gone on, what the history and the thinking was. Uh, essentially, it's, it's available for a number of different purposes, and I think what we, what we need to do as a staff is bring that back to you and share with you what that thinking was and then, and then get some feedback from you as, as it relates to what we should do with the, with the property. If we want to continue to hold it, if we want to sell it, if we want to turn it into something, um, there isn't really, from what I can tell so far, any kind of uh, definitive vision, just a bunch of options that are available for the facility. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Berry? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the City Attorney's Report. This is